Hello and welcome to NIOS studio. I, Dr. Upas Naresh, I'll discuss with you the topic of life skills and their development among girl children. Here within the topic you see we will discuss two aspects. The first, what are life skills? And the second, why is it important to develop life skills among girl children? So when we say what are life skills in a crux we may say abilities that help promote mental well-being and competence in young people as they face the realities of life. UNICEF describes it as life skills based education is behavior change or behavior development approach designed to address a balance of three areas knowledge, attitude and skills. WHO describes this act the abilities for adaptive and positive behavior that enables individuals to deal effectively with the demands and challenges of everyday life. So what are the life skills? Overall we have 8 core areas of life skill. First problem solving, decision making, creative thinking, critical thinking, Interpersonal relationship skills, effective communication skills, self-awareness building skills, empathy and coping with stress and emotions. Significance of learning life skills because it may come to your mind that what is the requirement of learning life skills. Life skills is one of the core areas that must be learned if you want to be empowered. To be able to explore alternatives is the first. The second is to weigh pros and cons. I must be very clear about a decision and about the weight of doing something and about not doing something. Thus, I must be able to build a rationale behind doing something and not doing something. Thus, it brings us to the point of taking rational decisions. Next is communicating effectively. One more very important thing is learning to say no. No, I am sorry, I cannot do it. No, I am sorry, I am overburdened. No, I am sorry, I would not like to watch the movie. Thus, learning to say no is a very important thing and learning to be assertive. The first thing we would deal with is problem solving. What is problem solving? The root is identifying the problem. Formulating the ways to solve the problem. A single problem may have many solutions. But we have to decide which one is most viable to us. And then we have to try it out. Now you may ask that if this solution does not work, then we again move on to the next solution. But we do not give up on a problem. We crack and we solve the problem. The next thing that we want to decide on is decision making. Decision making is one of the root priorities of problem solving. Because after we identify the problem and identify the ways of solving the problem, we have to take the decision of which will be the optimized way of solving the problem. Now what are the major life decisions? Fixing goals for life, that is to develop oneself, prioritize what I want to attain. Second is choice of lifestyle, of what I want to wear, of the food I want to take, of the hobbies I want to have, of the study, of the education I want to do. Next is coping up. Every person walking through the face of life faces stress. So is the remedy alcohol or is it drugs? No. Coping up is a major way of taking decision that do I fall into the dark domain or do I fight back. Next is career. Choice of profession and what I want to study further or what I want to study within the profession itself. Responsible decision making. Now decision making and responsible decision making has got that fine thread 
in between while making decision after examining the choice and consequences in view of one's values and goal is responsible decision making. Now, I may be given three types of fruits, mango, banana, guava. I have been given the choice of eating one fruit. I may take one fruit every day or I may choose mango as an alternative by taking mango all the three days. But in the case of life, we are not given so many choices. More often than not, we are on crossroads and the choice is of taking only one of the roads and never being able to come back to the crossroad again to traverse on the other path. Thus, responsible decision making is bridging the gap between what decision I should take and what decision I should not take and repent for not taking that particular decision. That is, building a rationale for taking the decision which I intend to take and to stand by it. Responsible decision making includes identifying and defining the problem, consider the consequences or outcomes, considering family and personal values, choosing one alternative and implementing the decision. Thus, we see responsible decision making is also a pathway into implementing the decision that I have taken. Creative thing. Creative thinking contributes to both decision making and problem solving. It enables to explore available alternatives and consequences or actions or non-actions. Next is critical thinking. The ability to analyze information and experiences in an objective manner which helps adolescents to recognize and to assess the factors influencing attitude and behavior, values, pressures, of peer and family, key to form the right attitude towards life. Interpersonal skills, to be able to develop and nurture supportive networks, to be able to end relationships constructively, help adolescents to relate with people in positive ways. Effective communication, now what is effective communication? If I say yes, what will you interpret? Automatically, I am moving my head like a no and on my mouth, I am saying a yes. So, you are unable to decipher what exactly I am trying to convey to you. So, what I want to convey should be very clear. So, the first thing is to able to express ourselves. One should not be under any kind of alteration of what exactly I want to say and what exactly I want to do. So, again this takes us back to where it takes us back to decision making. It takes us to the point where we have to be very clear about the decision taken and very clear to communicate what the decision has been taken. It can be done both verbally as I said yes and it can be done both non-verbally. To express opinions desires, needs and fears, also we need effective communication. To ask for advice and help, again we need effective communication and one you have to understand is that asking for help reduces the stress, it helps in taking the decision, it helps in problem solving and as you have by now understood that decision making, problem solving are both interrelated. Creative thinking and critical thinking help the process of decision making. Effective communication is the way to express the decision taken and the need and help required to carry forward the decision. Thus, taking an advice is also a very important component of effective communication. Second is negotiating skills. It allows to solve an issue, a problem or a conf conflict. There may be a particular problem where neither are you agreeing to it, neither am I agreeing to it. 
So, what is happening? We are at loggerheads. So, log being at loggerheads does not help us to take or solve the problem. So, what needs to be done is that you also need to open up, I also need to open up and together when we can open up, we can join and form a solution. Thus, without anger, intimidation, insubordination, aggressive force or behavior, we should learn to negotiate and to communicate. This helps us to deal constructively with problems. Next is coping with emotions and stress. Here the first point is that you have to learn to understand what is the particular emotion that the person in front of you is undergoing. That can be understood through emotional intelligence that is within you and secondly it can be acted or enacted on when you understand and empathize with the person who is undergoing the emotional turmoil. Now what happens when a person is very angry and you fail to understand the cause behind the anger of the person? Your wit or humor at the particular point goes base with the person who is very angry. So you need first to relax the person, seek his problem and to try and negotiate with him a decision which can be taken to minimize his stress. Thus, recognizing effects of emotions on others and ourselves is an important and first step towards coping with emotions and stress. Second is being aware of how influence, how emotions influence behavior. Second is being aware of how emotions influence behavior. Third is able to respond emotions appropriately. Now, the person in front of you is very sad, has just now faced a big loss in life and you try to be very happy in front of the person. You are laughing, you are cracking jokes. Will it settle down very well with the other person? Well, effectively not. So how you respond to the emotions of the person is very important and it has to be done appropriately in which the person feels that you have in-depth feeling towards the loss that the person has encountered. How to cope with stress? First, to recognize the source of stress in our life. To recognize how this affects us by identifying ways that help to control our levels of stress and by learning how to relax and to minimize the tension. Now see it's again like problem solving. We again go back to identifying what is the cause of the problem. Similarly, we try to identify what is the cause of the stress. More often than not, the problem in the life is the cause of the stress. More often than not also, the problem is aggravated by the amount of stress we give to the problem. Next is self-assertiveness. Self-assertiveness is a very important factor among every individual, not only girls. Assertive people respect themselves and others equally. It is communicating feelings and need while respecting rights of others, being able to stand up for one's own values and needs, take control of one's decision and recognize attempts to control others. So you see, if I request you to do something for me, you will do it gladly than if I force you to do something for me. So you have to also understand how you are dealing with the other. If you need something done, Try to request that person because that person may have other issues also to be resolved, other problems to be tackled before he can help you out. And you have to also realize when the other person is helping you, you need to be grateful for the other person's of help than to dominate that person and to take him or her for granted. Now we have to understand the ways to say no. Why 
is it so important to say no? It is important to say no so that you are not unnecessarily physically or emotionally burdened. Maybe you do not want to read a book. Maybe you do not want to watch a movie. Maybe you do not want to go to somebody's house. Maybe you do not want to attend a party. So you have to learn to say no. Instead of doing all the things and regretting having done them, you should learn to say no and to utilize the time that gives you effectively and proficiently. So the first way to say the no is polite refusal with a given reason. I am sorry, I am unable to do it because of this or because of that. Then repeat your refusal if the person in front of you forces you to do it. Third, walk away. You do not need to stand and keep on explaining yourself. You can simply walk away. Fourth, ignore the person who is taking undue advantage of you. Third, avoid the situation altogether. If possible, do not at all get into any kind of communication with a person who is giving a request which you can attain to. It's better simply to avoid the situation. Then find others who can support you. So if you have a cause to say no, find other people who can support your cause. Talk about your own feelings. Tell I do not want to watch this movie. I want to watch the other movie. I do not want to take engineering as a vocation. I want to take teaching as a vocation. Learn to assert yourself is an important base of saying and learning to say no. I do not want to become a doctor. I want to become a teacher. So learning to say a no and learning to be assertive are both bound together. Now how does change come through the change in the life skills and how what are the ways I want the girls to develop the life skills within them. First life skill brings awareness. It provides you with the practical knowledge, it brings you awareness, it provides you the concern because you are empathetic to the person, you are ready to cope with the situations of stress. So you are having what you are having the concern and automatically education is providing you with the knowledge to take the decision and to solve the problems. But you have to be motivated enough to take the step forward to solve the problem. Many times it happens that we are not ready to solve the problem because we are not motivated enough to solve the problem. We from the initial timing think that we will not be able to solve the problem at all. So the lack of motivation becomes a cause of stress in us. There should be a readiness to change. More often than not, what happens is that when a problem has got solutions, one of the solutions is also how you can change to change the perspective of the problem. So you should also be ready to change. You should be willing to change. You should accept if there is a fault within you, if there is a fault with the system, if there is a fault with the association and to rectify it. Third is the habit. Changes comes when we form a habit of bringing change. When we bring a change into our lifestyle. When we motivate our lifestyle into something which has awareness in it, has a readiness to change and has willingness to change and accept our own faults in it, we are ready to change in our behavior. Life skill education. Undoubtedly, when we need to teach life skills to the girls, we need to understand what are the ways in which we can teach the life skills. The first aspect of teaching life skill is that the teacher needs to be dynamic. The teacher has to understand that each person in life has problems, has to take decisions 
and has their own critical and creative thinking, has their own interpersonal skills and own effective communication techniques to cope with the stress that they face. So, a dynamic teacher actually lets the child take the decisions. He makes it a child-centered program and he makes the child learn to cope with the stress, learn to take the decision and learn to stand by the decision taken by the child. The next is dynamic learning. Every action taken may not be correct. So a person also needs to learn from the experience that the particular action has brought. And the person when taking the decision has to remember the rationale behind 